Hello, welcome to another nerdy toy box audio video demonstration video. This is going to be a deep dive. We love a deep dive. Let's dive deeply into a multi break point envelope, um, which uh, was featured in one of our earlier packs, but we've uh, zhuzhed it up a little bit, added a few more features, and uh, it's now um, included in the newly released Atomic pack. And it looks fancy as well because we had a fancy GUI designer work on it. So what have we got here? Let's look. Let's get on with this. So this very simple environment here is a multi breakpoint envelope and an oscillator both going into a multiplier, which is um, a kind of numerical way of saying VCA, a voltage controlled amplifier. We feed an audio signal into one of the inputs and then feed a modulation signal from the envelope into the other input. And the audio signal coming out of the oscillator is bipolar, going from between minus one and one. And as long as this multiplication, as long as it's being multiplied against something that is between zero and one, it is controlling the amplitude. As soon as we start having numbers um, beyond zero uh, into the negative numbers, we start uh, bringing back an inverted version of the oscillator. So this is the multi breakpoint envelope. We have it connected via the envelope out. As you can see this pink cable going into the multiplier there and this oscillator going into port one. And then the output is just going into the mixer, into the one side of the mixer, because when we fill one side of the mixer, the mixer is aware of this and spreads it across both channels like a good mono converter sort of should do. And that's what it does. So, excuse me, let's look at the multi breakpoint envelope and some features. Let's first of all hear what it sounds like. Sounds like that. And it looks. So at the moment, we've got a loop on. Have we? Sounds filthy. When we don't have loop on, uh, first of all, let's start at the top. This switch here is for bipolar and unipolar outputs. We want it to be a unipolar output. We only want the modulation signal to be positive to, a, to zero. Uh, as soon as we switch it to negative, this other line appears, and because the and because the multi breakpoint envelope has now changed the way it's scaling the numbers, it's uh, because I think because the last number here is down here is a kind of when it's a unipolar signal that will technically be zero. But as soon as we switch it to bipolar, that's like a minus one. It's maximum, so we're getting an inverted version of this oscillator going out through the multiply and into the mixer. So we want this to be bipolar, uh, unipolar, forgive me, unipolar. We have a loop button here as well. Obviously we've just seen that. That works like that. When the loop button isn't on, this the breakpoint envelope, you might expect this behavior already, but it's it has a fixed duration. So no matter how quickly or slowly you release the key from, or you trigger it basically, it will last the same amount of time. That's just a feature of envelopes, of multi-breakpoint envelopes, rather than um, your standard attack, decay, sustain, and release envelopes. Well, you can scale those as well with the right technology. So this here, let me just put this back on this setting. So you'll recognize these three icons from um, our oscillators and such. <clears throat> so this, we'll put it on loop so we can hear it. This, in this mode, kind of frequency mode, will speed up the rate that the envelope is traversed and read back. Hmm, interestingly fast, wouldn't you say? And uh, we also have key tracking, which is useful for things we'll come to later. And we have a tempo tracked mode, which means that you can lock it, lock the envelope to a uh, sequence and things like that. Kind of the good use of the envelope as a sequence. So we'll explore that in a few moments. Uh, what else have we got up here? There's a couple of other functions. We've got all these shapes up here. 
So depending on the last value and the setting of the loop and all this kind of stuff, we'll make a noise. So we'll turn that off. But these are, there's eight here. <clears throat> you can copy from one to the other by left. So we look at this shape, that's shape two, that's shape one. I'm gonna right click over to shape two and now that's also that. Uh, let's just middle around with that a second and then we can see these are different. We can drag this one with a, I'm pointing with my right, with my left mouse button and I'm going to click and drag with my right and da, 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 and now they're all that envelope apart from the lock because I didn't get up there. So that should make sense. Um, here we go. Let's look down this list still over here. Underneath the loop button, let's turn the cables off. We know what, how the cables are hooked up now. So we've got these two buttons as snap buttons. You'll know these from your other familiar uh, multi-segment envelope generators, <clears throat> I, I assume. And uh, so it's vertical snap. Horizontal snap. That's a vertical snap. Hold on a minute, let me turn that one off. Okay, so this one is the vertical snap, of course. And we can change the snap value useful for things like if you want to create a sequence for four or five notes um to trigger a drum machine or whatever or you don't want to do a whole scale or you could do two scales uh have fun editing that could be done i'm sure it could be done uh so there's two snapping buttons i'm going to turn uh them off for the moment this button here let me put the info back on to show you what it's called it's called pin and what it does is when it's on. Ah, sorry. Okay. When it with this is when it's on now. You can see the pen, and there's kind of three dots and a line after it. When it's on, when it's in this mode, the breakpoints post the position that you're clicking from are maintained in position. And when it's off, all that goes out the window, and you can do whatever the hell you want. Make sense? I think that makes sense. Let's put it back on that. Hold on a minute. Oh, it's this mode, yeah. There we go. Pins. Pins locked, pins not locked. This is a step draw function. When you uh, when it's off and any any breakpoints you add to the envelope uh, are kind of connected the the curve the line connecting the two points has a curve value of zero and uh, as you can see when we do this we can pull the thing up there and go this way and pull it down there and go that way and all this is maintained when we muck around with the curve setting all those relationships are maintained but what the step when it's on when it's blue does so when you add a break point it will add it with a hard edge so that you can Good for creating sequences and that kind of thing. That's that's the main point. Speeds up some operations. And of course, you can get rid of those hard edges by twiddling with the curve knob. We'll put it out in the middle, keep that, uh, keep that neutral for the moment. And this little switch down here is velocity. That you could see that when the little pop-up popped up, uh, which is good for when you want to use it as a volume envelope and you want it to react to your to the fluidity of your keyboard playing or your sequencer triggering, however. You trigger it, and this is a loop button, kind of holds. If the loop isn't in A, so this is, when, when this is on, it just loops the whole signal, um, and it is sort of, the break point, the loop points are the first note, the first break point, and the last break point. If you turn loop on, we can change those. We, I just re-triggered it with a MIDI note, and now we can... Uh... Nice. Okay, let's uh, turn that one off. Right, I think that covers the bases, other than this little depth button here, but you'll know what that does. That's the kind of strength of the whole thing. And on the opposite side, you can see it inverts it. If you can see that, the whole signal's been inverted and uh, offsets for sequences and things like that, you can start from a certain point. So we'll have a look at that in a minute in the next uh, channel that I've created a sequencer to demonstrate sequencer use. 
So what have we have? We have a breakpoint envelope here, as expected, and an oscillator, and two envelope generators. So this one appears to be receiving a gate from the breakpoint envelope uh, and the audio signal from the oscillator before it, which is kind of not expect, not, not surprising. You want the audio signal from the oscillator to go somewhere. And, but there's two envelopes. So how are these envelopes working? So let's bypass this middle envelope and see what we get. So I'm just taking the out from the oscillator and putting it straight in this last envelope here. This last envelope is triggered by the MIDI in. So the gate's triggered from the MIDI in and it's receiving the audio from the oscillator. And it's going out to port one of the thing. Now, we also have a sequence here as you can see on the multi point envelope, that is going into modulation port A of the oscillator. And a very carefully, carefully configured uh, modulation depth has been set. So what happens? Right, that, that's what happens. We can see this modulation note kind of icon moving around relative to so let's move it down to it's continuous it's just we 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 open this envelope and then this envelope the multi breakpoint envelope sends the modulation changes to the oscillator and the pitch changes as you can hear la 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 um my mindless loop but we can we can because this has been designed as such, take a gate feed out of the envelope and trigger another envelope with that so that every time the note changes, a gate is triggered, which is what this envelope is doing. So if we just listen to that envelope again, I'll put that back into the main long envelope. And as you can see, this one is the one that's being triggered. If I unplug that, nothing happens. Put it back in again. And I hope that made sense. I think you can see what's going on there. So, more to the point, the note I'm going to do, I'm going to show you, I'm going to just tune that. Strange that that sounds slightly ah because we have velocity on. So we don't want velocity on a sequencer step on a sequencer kind of tuned envelope like this. Can you see why? Because this reset switch, which is receiving a gate from the MIDI in, is interpreting my velocity as a depth. So it's changing all that stuff, making it quieter and louder, which is changing the relationship between my position that I've chosen on this scale of 12 notes and how this modulation depth is interpreting. I've tuned it so that this top note is exactly an octave. You can almost hear an octave. those notes basically they're notes you can hear them but as soon as we turn velocity on this all goes out the window I'm dead no while I'm playing uh, so we turn velocity off when we're using this as a sequencer I would turn velocity off unless you want to exploit it as a feature in your sequencer because there are other ways of tuning the data that's coming out of these things like this for example well this is a very cleverly designed sequence of of uh, of little patches so what's this one i mean it's another sequencer but why is why is this one different to the last one let's have a look 
So we've got the note. We've got pitch coming out of the MIDI in. Let's start at the top, work our way forward. We've got pitch going out of there, going into this sum, which is going to add the signals together. It's not a multiply, it's just going to add them together. And we've also, what's this one? This is coming out of a level, which is coming out of the breakpoint envelope. Now, why have I done it like this? Mostly because for ease of use, I don't want... It's, it's, if I use this to calibrate the output of the envelope, then I basically can't make adjustments because I'm losing the granularity of any snapping that I might want to adhere to. So I've chosen to scale it down with a level, which is basically what taking it down to 20% pretty much. And then that's going into the sum. So those two signals, the initial pitch signal and the um, slightly uh, reduced envelope values are going out and then summed together and then going into here. So let's just bypass that for the moment. What do we get? So we can, as you can hear, stuff changes. Let's make a tuneless little beepy thing that's going to annoy people for a short amount of time. Um, so, right, what are we looking at? So, let's turn off vertical snapping. Nice. There we are. What notes are they? I don't know. Pick a note, because it's not them. So, and, I mean, we can hear that those, they, they're not notes, they're just sort of between notes, right? They're, they're. You might not be, but they, um, you might not be able to hear it, but they kind of aren't notes. So if we go... Well, anyway, we can tell they're not notes because they're between, <laughs> they're between breakpoint, they're between these snap lines, which uh, we've cut up into 12 to give us note divisions. And uh, forget this for the moment, it's just a kind of scaling thing. But we're pumping them into this oscillator, added together to the pitch. So we're adding the pitch signal and this modulated signal that's been shrunk a little bit together. And then that's going into the pitch input of the oscillator. Oh, there we go, you can hear microtones, microtonal music is the beautiful, it's a beautiful thing. So, what's this? What's this doing here? I've added this here because, ultimately, we can force the crazy tuning of this stuff through it and force it to notes. So I think at the moment it's just configured to be a chromatic scale. Yeah. So look. We can see so we've got kind of full um there's no kind of uh, snapping now, but the notes that are coming out of the combination of this and this device going through the transpose meaning are meaning that the notes that hit the oscillator, the voltage, the kind of virtual voltages that are hitting the oscillator are notes that we recognise as being part from the part of the Western scales that are that are bred into us by this this culture, this society. So they sound familiar. I mean, uh, they sound a bit disparate and strange at the moment because they aren't really relative to each other, but I promise you they're all notes. And with this transpose device, we can also force it to like a pentatonic or something fun. And because we've got this transpose thing doing the scale, doing the scale function, any note I hit, I'm hitting E flat, so 
this is not shifting it's in c uh so the kind of this is in this is kind of laid out in c as it were um oh here we go c this is c there um so i can play any note so i'm going to hit a b so hit me hitting a c i'm going to hit now a b flat so it's still the same notes uh i'm going to hit an f sharp and here's a g very slightly different because everything's being forced to scales, which uh, is very handy for when you're doing crazy modular stuff like this, where any note could happen, but you also might want it to be a note that is recognised as a note. So there you go. That is uh, another way of doing sequences and kind of pitching the output and making good use of it also. Yeah. Oh, all the fun of the fair. And okay, let's move on to my next my next channel track patch, which is oscillator territory. So as you can see, there's no oscillators here. We've got a mini synth over here that's connected to port three of the mixer here, as you can see. Um, but it's muted. We just click the thing and it's muted. So what is going to come out? What's this? This looks... Oh, this looks a bit like that, doesn't it? Can you see? So here I am, hitting a note. So what's happening here? What have we got going on? What we've got going on is... Because of the way the breakpoint envelopes work... I just want to make sure I'm going to say this all correctly. Okay, yeah. So what we've done, what I've done in this particular patch is we've turned the multi-breakpoint envelope into an oscillator. As you can see, we have the pitch tracking stuff here, um, which means that, uh, and as this rates it to 100, it will mean that it tracks kind of 100% to... I mean, as you can see, I, I hit a note on the keyboard. A note comes out of the thing. Um, and we have a pitch port in here that's populated, populated by the pitch out coming out of the MIDI in here, as you can see. Oh, let's just turn the help off for the moment. We don't need that. And kind of the snapshots up here are ultimately kind of oscillator presets, which we can change using the curve. like that and obviously move these around and observe the wave shape here and obviously this needs to be set to bipolar output and it is as you can see here if we set it to unipolar output we get that and that's not a very useful oscillator signal because it's not crossing the zero a speaker will have big problems trying to play back that waveform not, it's not going to break it, but it's not make, you're not making it easy for the speaker or the thing to play back the sound because it's not supposed to look like that. So we put it back to, and it's nice and loud as well. Right. So that's but that is basically that. Um, what have I got going on? So I've got the pitch going in to the pitch of the multi breakpoint envelope. I have a value here because because of the way the multi breakpoint envelope works. When there isn't a gate signal in here, when there's no, when it's the when the reset signal is at zero, ultimately, um, the cycling of the envelope stops, so there's no sound comes out of it. Which is that's just the way these these things have been built, so that they function best and don't waste CPU. So in order to, in in order for me to get a release out of it, because Normally, they wouldn't be a release. Look, actually, I can set it up here. Yeah, okay, so that's the gate. Here's the MIDI in, both going to... So as soon as I let go of my note, the... And you can even see the visualisation. At the moment, it's flickering away nicely. I let go of the key, and it all stops. That's because of the way the envelope works. So we had to get around that in, in this particular patch to use it as an oscillator. 
by just having a value from the nano kit somewhere out as long as it's a, as long as it's above one uh hold on a minute that should be yeah i put that back in there oh did i turn oh i have to switch yes okay so if that if you if you end up finding yourself changing the reset port triggering stuff uh you might find that um you need to switch to another snapshot just to start the sound up again i'll see if i can report that as a thing to dave it might be fixable it might just be a way that these um breakpoint envelope engines work but I'll ask. I'll ask. You probably won't experience that as a problem much anyway. It maybe. Maybe you will. Who knows? I'll speak to Dave. Um, so that's how the oscillator works. Now, one of the th one of the things about this I feel I should point out is that I did have to tune the loop point because obviously the loop is on. If we turn the loop off, there's no oscillator because it's just going and that's it. But we want a loop now. Yes, that's how you tune it. Ooh. Oh, I like that anyway, as a sound. So, how do we tune it? That's why I've got the mini synth here. So I can hear... That's pretty tight, pretty tight, eh? And now that... Oscillators locked to that. Now we can as well use the rate. But because of the way the scaling is done, the numbers might not be as naturally. You might not instantly think, oh, 70 is what I need. Just move the numbers around. You'll find the right one. You'll hear. You'll hear what you want. And you can do another octave. I think it's 48. We tuned it, haven't we? So you go. That's that's been tuned. Oh yeah. And uh, that I think covers using the envelope as an oscillator. I don't think. There's anything else that needs to be covered. Everything else has been covered. Yes. Okay, so that's how you use it as an oscillator. You have to feed something into the reset so it's running all the time. You could probably, if you need the envelope, if you need the oscillator or you need the envelope as an oscillator uh, to be re-triggered on each hit, you'll probably need to find a way to extract note-ons and maybe turn them into triggers um, it's possible, but fiddly. I didn't think it's necessary for this um, little demonstration. So uh, there you go. That's that. Uh, we do have one more demonstration here. What have I called it? MIDI note snapshot. <clears throat> so let me just have a quick cough and a cup of tea. <clears throat> and look at what on earth I've done here. So that's an, oscill that's a, an oscillator. The oscillator here, oscillator. Um, and this is, again, this is very similar to the very first patch. It's just an envelope <clears throat> going into an oscillator. Uh, well, it's not. It's an oscillator and an envelope going into a multiply device, which is behaving as a voltage-controlled amplifier, which is going into the mixer. Okay, it's as simple as that. But what this is doing... <clears throat> We've got this little switch here turned on. And what that does is means we can select a snapshot from the MIDI notes. And the MIDI note from which we select the snapshot from is indicated here. So I will play on my keyboard up here, on my second keyboard, and on my 
controller keyboard over here, I'm going to select some envelopes. So on one keyboard, I'm triggering very low notes in that C1 range. And as you can hear, if the last... Well, if some aspect of those... Because um, this, this is all looping as well, actually. Look, so these envelopes are looping. So between some of these loop points, there's still data. So it wants to make a noise. So we hear a noise. But I'm, I'm just selecting these from MIDI notes, from C, C sharp up to, what, the eighth note, which is G. <clears throat> and playing weird shit over here, weird over here, on another keyboard, an octave off so high. Crazy. And that's how that works. Um could be handy for things like selecting different sequences um, or um, anything, really. Think of a thing, think of eight of them, and then you can switch between them with your MIDI notes. That's the end of the deep dive. Thanks for listening and watching. Um, I hope you learned something. Go and have a look at the multi-breakpoint envelope. It's a fun little thing. I think you'll agree. Lots of craziness to be had with it. And uh, I don't know if you've got any other ideas, chuck them in the comments. And uh, until the next video, I hope to hear that you've been making sounds and music 24-7 and just, uh, you know, not, not too loud, obviously, not too loud. Okay, good. Thank you. Have a good day. Good bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye.